Hello! In the following two lectures, we're going to continue with our RC helicopter. In this lecture, we're going to look at the main shaft of this helicopter based on our knowledge from solids and from statics. And then I'm going to try to make an analogy between this question, this real problem, and one of the questions in Shigley's book. And in the next uh, lecture, we're going to talk about the other factors from uh, the criteria that we learned from chapter 7 of Shigley's book. Okay, so this system consists of a uh, main shaft here, a couple of blades, a tail, landing bars, antenna, and this is the motherboard of the system, and this place is where the battery stands on, which I disconnected the battery from the system. Uh, this part is the gearbox and as you see uh, there are a couple of gears uh, uh, here in this in the cabin okay um, we're going to talk about the main shaft in this lecture um, if I want to show the main shaft uh, in a simple way I can say if this is my main shaft uh, like this at this point I have blades so I can say this is my blade and um, I just want to say that I just want to assume that I just have one blade I just have this pair of blades I don't have this one it doesn't make any differences at the end but just for simplification I'm gonna remove this part and I'm gonna say okay I just have one pair of blades here and there is a gear here, spare gear attached to the bar, uh, attached to the shaft, and there is another gear here, and this one uh, is attached to the rotor. Um, okay, so this is the rotor that you can see here. That's a um, two. Uh, that's a twin engine system, but. Uh, because we're going to remove one of the blades, so we're going to say, okay, we just have one gear here, or here and we just have one rotor. Uh, maybe in the next picture you can see that better. Yeah. Uh, okay. If this is the rotor here, uh, that gear is attached to the rotor. So if this one is rotating this way, that caused the other gear rotate the opposite way. So if this is going this way, the other one will be rotated that way okay so if I come back to my simplified uh, free by diagram here I can say if this one is rotating this way so that will be rotate this way so I have a rotating shaft here that's important that this shaft is rotating we're gonna use that point down the road okay um, Let's see what else you can see from this question. And that's a motherboard, I said. Um, okay. So if I just look at the gear, okay. Okay, uh, if I just look at the gear, I see that uh, there is one gear here and there is main shaft here and the blade at the top of the uh, system. In this uh, page, uh, I rotated the picture 900, de 900 degrees counterclockwise. So if this is the gear here and this is the blade, I can somehow uh, make some analogy between this question and question number 27 of chapter 7 of Shigley's book. Uh, my book is 10th edition. So in 10th edition, that's the question number 23. And I did suggest you to um, buy the book and find the books uh, in the library if you don't want to buy that. Uh, that's a very, very good uh, book to have in your bookshelf. Okay, um, 
So, if I just look at this shaft, at this point, I'm gonna uh, say this point is point A, my initial point. The center of keyway where the blade or where the fan is located, I call that point point B. This is the center of the bearing. I call this point point C. And this is the center of the gear, point D. This is where I have some stress concentration sources around this point and I have a lower diameter here. So this is point E and this point where I have fillet here I call this point point F. And this is center of another bearing that I have I call it G and finally the end point which I called H. The reason why I picked these points are to me these points are somehow important, they are somehow critical. End points of the beams are always critical for us. Center of bearings, this point and this point, these two points are also important for us because uh, bearings are like supports for our beam. So for example, uh, this is how I see this problem. So I have one reaction force at this point and one reaction force at this point can call this one RC and I can call this one RG and these two forces are acting in the center of the bearing so these two points are also critical for us the other two points that I mentioned B and D these two points are center of our keyways these are important for us because um, we have hole here and these holes make uh, a stress concentration so these two points are also important for us and the same reason uh, val is valid for points E and F where we have these two uh, curvature and these two fillets here. Um, okay, you can also pick some other points uh, and do some analysis for those points but at the end of the day you'll see that the importance of these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 points are more than any other points in this question. Okay, let's see what the question says. The shaft shown in the figure is driven by a gear at right QV here. So this shaft is rotating by this gear. So that's the gear and that's the fan. Okay. And this one drives a fan at the left keyway at point B and is supported by two deep groove ball bearings at point C and point G. Uh, bearings will be discussed in chapter 11 in Chigley's book and we're gonna do that uh, sometime down the road. The shaft is made from steel called drawn. Okay, at steady state speed the gear transmits a radial force of 230 pounds and tangential load of uh, 633 pounds at a pitch diameter of 8 inches. All dimensions in the graph are in inches, okay, and we're asked to find the fatigue factors of safety at any potentially critical locations which I assume these points and then we are asked, we are asked to find the uh, deflection to see if they are accepted based on our criteria or not. Okay, um, in order to have a better visualization about this question, if this is my shaft, uh, I'm gonna look at the shaft from this point. So when I look at the shaft at just cross section, if this is the cross section of the shaft, which is round, I have two forces acting on this shaft. The first one I call that one F1 is radial, and the second one is called a tangential, and I can show that one with F2. In order to start any analysis for this question, first we need to move all the point, all the forces and all the moments, which we don't have anything here, to the center of the shaft. So if this is the center of the shaft, I need to move that F1 to the center of the shaft. Because F1 is radial and it goes through the point, so I can just easily move F1 to the center of the shaft and it doesn't make any torque, any moment. But when I want to move F2 to the center of the shaft, I can put one equivalent force here with the same value, with the same amount. 
but this force makes some torque when I want to move this point this force to this point so I'm gonna have one torque like this okay so if I want to say my F1 here is what is given in the question and that was at 230 230 pound my F2 here is 633 pound and the thing that I showed you here is for uh, better understanding okay so the torque is F2 times R and R is the distance of F2 and the center of the shaft so this R is pitch radius and we're going to talk about the gears in the next two chapters or next three chapters okay uh, so if that's my shaft if this one was point A, B, C, so this is point C and I have one reaction force at point C and I have another reaction force at point G and I have one force at point D the, po the force acting at point D is the, is the force that I just showed you so that is F1 squared plus F2 squared square root of the answer. Okay, so if F1 is uh, 230 and F2 is three, 633, so that will be 230 squared plus 633 squared square root of the answer and the answer will be 673.49 pound okay so i found the amount of force d okay i'm going to show you something here before i continue um, If I have this force, if this is my force F1 and this is F2, I can remove these two points and I can put an equivalent force which is FR like this. So because the shaft is round F1 is perpendicular, is in radial direction, F2 is in radial direction, so FR is also in radial direction. That's why here I can say this FD, which is this FR here, is radial and these two reaction forces are also radial. So if I just look at the question like this in 2D plane, like if that's my X, that's my Y, I can say this F it doesn't make any angle with the Y axis. It doesn't have any uh, part in Z direction. Okay, that was in a parenthesis. Okay, so we found uh, uh, ray, uh, f uh, force gear force at point D. So now we, we're gonna we're gonna use some equations to find RC and RG. Uh, when you want to find these two uh, reaction forces, it doesn't matter if there is any stress concentration sources in the question it doesn't matter if there is any keyways in the question it doesn't matter if the um, surf is the if the diameter is changing or not uh, i just look at the beam like this and i say okay i have one rc at this point and i have one rg at this point and i have one fd all important things for us uh, are the forces, the amount of forces and the 
distances between the force and but between the forces. So for example, if I call this distance d1 and if I call this distance d2, all the other imp all, all important things for us are d1, d2, rc, fd and rg. So the diameter and the other the other factors are not important for us when you want to find reaction forces. Okay, so I can write sigma forces in y directions equals zero, and if that's my positive direction, I have RC minus FD plus RG equals zero. So I can say RC plus RG equals FD, which is 673.49 pound. So that's a point. That's one equation with two unknown. So I need to have another equation in order to find these two unknown. And I'm gonna write sigma moment around point C. This point could be any arbitrary point equals zero. And I'm gonna say this is my positive direction for moment. So based on that, I can say my FD, which is 673.49 times d1 makes positive moment minus rg the distance is d1 plus d2 makes negative moment equals zero from the question we know that d1 is 6.8675 inches and d2 is 3.2525 inches so when we plug these numbers into these equations we can find rg which is 457.03 pound and when we put this uh, rg into this equation we can find rc We can find RC, which is in this case 216.46 pound. Okay, so what I did so far was uh, I pointed out the critical points, potentially critical points. I said, for example, if this is my point A, the center of key ways, center of bearing, center of other key ways, this point, this point, this, and finally this. I pointed, the, I pointed out the critical points, potentially critical points, and I found the forces, all the forces, and all the moments, and all the torques acting on this question. We don't have any moment bending moment we just had one torque acting from uh, these from uh, this bearing to the this bearing from the from the both supports and we had some reaction forces here at point C and point G and some radial uh, some uh, another force some uh, radial force at point D. Okay. So at this point, what I need to do, I need to find an equation for moment. Okay. So if that was my beam, And if I had one force here, RC, another one here, FD, and another one here, RG. In order to find moment equation, I'm going to use singularity function. And as we said, when you want to use this, uh, this uh, function, 
we need to do one cut before the last event, which is here, RG and the end at and the end of the beam. So we're gonna cut here, somewhere here. Okay. And then I'm gonna write my moment based on whatever I can see in the question. So I have one RC here, that's my RC, bracket X minus this distance, whatever it is. I call it A, X minus A to the power of one. And that's upward, so that's positive, minus FD, X minus this distance, X minus B to the power of one and plus RG X minus this distance here, call it C, X minus C to the power of one. So this moment can be divided into three groups when x is between 0 and a, when it's between this point and this point, and when x is between this point and this point. So we can find an equation, a piecewise function for moment, uh, for moment. And then we can come to this graph and we can then draw the mx diagram here. Um, I leave it to you to uh, make the piecewise equations for uh, the moment and here I'm going to just show you uh, the equations for M. Okay, um, when X is between 0 and A, this bracket is negative, so it will be 0. This bracket is negative, so it will be zero. And this bracket, the inside of the bracket is negative. So because of the properties of the bracket, because of the singularity function, so this will be zero. So from X between zero to A, the moment will be zero. So from this point to this point, there is no moment. Okay. Oh, sorry, the, the force is here. So up to this point, there is no moment. Um, after point A, so when X is between, after is, is greater than A and less than this point, so when we are in this region, uh, this bracket is zero because that's negative and this bracket is zero because this is negative. But this bracket will be something positive. So this bracket will be changed to a parenthesis. So we're going to have RA, which is a constant force times x so that's a line equation or some amount of force times x so from this point i'm gonna have a line with a constant slope up to point d where the other force is acting okay and when i pick another another point here at this region this parenthesis it will be negative, this bracket will be negative, so that's zero, but these two will be changed to parentheses. So I have this guy and this guy. So because of these two terms, uh, I have, and because they both are some constant forces times x, and because this fd is greater than rc, so the coefficient of x will be negative. So I'm gonna have a line with negative slope and that line uh, starts with point D and ends at point G where the other force is. And if I pick a point after C, they will all cancel out each other. So again, that will be zero. Or I could 
or I could just look at the graph from the from the other side and I could find out that this is zero. So that's the equation for torque. For equation for sorry for moment, for for the torque uh, graph, we know that the torque that we found in the first step was acting from point B to point D from fan to the gear. So I'm gonna have zero torque from here to here, and then I'm gonna have some amount of torque from point B to the point um, the center of the gears point D and again I'm gonna have zero uh, torque after okay here I'm gonna uh, show some values on the, on the graph. So for the torque, this is what you found. That was F times R. So the numerical value uh, will be, in this case, will be 2, 5, 3, 2 pound inch. At this point, the peak of the moment, the value is 14.59 and they are all in pound inch. Now uh, this value, the value of moment at point E is 11.15 and the value of moment at point F is 845 pound times inch okay so we're done with the first part and we analyze this question based on our knowledge from solids and statics so what we did was if I want to just summarize what I did in this part in this lecture is we look at the problem and you said, okay, we want to analyze the main shaft, which is this shaft. And then we simplified the shaft with this small example. And then we uh, made an analogy between this question and one of the question in Shigley's book. And then we continued with that question. So once we can, if we can analyze this question, we can analyze our main shaft in the uh, in the helicopter and we said that we have two forces here two reaction forces at this point I have some radial force at this point so I found all those forces in the first step so I did my free body diagram I did my Newton's law and I found the forces once I get the forces I use the singularity functions and I found an equation for moment and then I plot then I plotted the moment diagram and torsion diagram okay so this is what we did in the first lecture uh, in the next in the next lecture uh, we're gonna study uh, about these uh, potentially critical points from point A to point H and we're gonna see which points are more important for us and which points has less importance. Okay, thank you.